Hi, and welcome. I'm Gwendolyn Harrett, Product Manager for Content Manager. And today, in this video, we're going to look at new features in the Microsoft Teams integration with Content Manager 23.3. So we're going to start looking at the server side. So if I'm an administrator and I go into the Content Manager app, as a reminder, this is where I'm going to configure rules for automatically checking in Teams data using scheduling into Content Manager. Now, as a reminder, these rules use check-in styles, which are ways to very easily automate metadata properties when you check content in from Teams into Content Manager. In 23.3, we have some new features for these check-in styles, so let's create a new one to look at these. As usual, I've got to select what record type I want this check-in style to apply to, and I've got to give some default properties. For example, what category will the checked in information go to and what are going to be some of the default values? We now have some new items as well for these default values that you can see here. So let's give a name to this check in style. Let's call it medical record. We have some changes now because we have this container tab. So not only can I decide what container something will be checked into. For example, I could say, let's just send it to Teams container. But I can actually say to automatically generate containers as information is checked in using certain intelligent rules. Let's look at some examples of these rules. First of all, at the top, I can select what record type this container is going to actually be that gets created. So I can say that it's going to behave like a folder and I could limit its size if I wanted to and change the value here. But I have some smart rules as well. So I can create containers for different owner locations, for different additional field values. So as a reminder, additional fields are your custom metadata. So if you have a unique ID, for example, it can create a container for each one of these unique IDs. A simple rule that we're gonna look at today is for example, let's create a container that's different for every month. But I could also use a template if I wanted something a little more complex. And of course, don't forget we have this extra processing tab where I can decide things like, is this check-in style suitable to use on my mobile app? So let's save this medical record check-in style, which I can see here as well as its properties, and which now appears at the top here, owned by me, available to use. So as a reminder, check-in styles get used when we're capturing information automatically on my Teams channels, for example. So I can go and look at my channels and select how files are going to be checked in and how posts are going to be checked in. So for example, this one here, which has no rules, I could go capture in CM and say that I want to use my medical style for files. And I could use a different one for posts, for example. I could save that. And then that's how this channel is now going to be managed. Of course, I can also remove and undo. And I can multi-select like we saw last time. So there's a few differences now. Because these check-in styles, if they point to a document store that is managed in place compatible, then you can store this using manage in place. So we now have manage in place available in Teams, um, in our Teams integration with Content Manager. And not only do we have manage in place available for this connector type, but we can also manage SharePoint sites through this app interface. So I could either search for all of my sites, which they're returned here, I could search for a particular site that I'd like to manage. So in this case, I'm going to select Team 16. And I can drill down, and I could do exactly the same thing of capturing information in Content Manager. Or I can drill all the way down and capture individual items. So we can see, in this case, I can check something in. It's in SharePoint directly here through the console. And again, this management can be done using manage in place if it's configured to do so. So those are the main changes on the server side. And again, we expect most organizations to use these 
automatic roles that use check-in styles for channels, sites, people, so chats, etc. But as you know, our integration with Teams also gives users the ability to manually come in and check information in if they need to do so. So if I'm a user, let's add some content here. So let's say I'm going to add medical reports from Adrian, from Aldous, and from Mary Jane. And I'm going to add these to my team so I can show you some of the new features we have on the manual end. So remember, I've got my Content Manager app integration. I can always add it here with the plus if I don't have it. And using this integration, I can see files and posts. So in the posts, I'll be able to see the post that I've just added now. That's the same as previously. But I have a new filter now where I can decide whether I want attachments to be included or not. So if I include attachments, I'll be able to see those. So I can now see the attachments that are added and included in this post because I've changed that filter. So let's go look at these files here. Um, I have a general banner letting me know that there is a general policy for this information. And I can see using the icons whether something is managed in place or whether something has been manually checked in by a user. And of course, I can see if something's not checked in at all. But to make it easier, I also have filters here. So I can say, show me inf only information that's in Content Manager or not in Content Manager. So here I have the three files I've just added because the automatic policy hasn't been run yet. It's probably going to run overnight or something like that. So in this case, I'm going to show off the new features for checking content in. So let's take Adrian's medical record, for example. I can select this and check it in. Let's make it a Teams record again, just to keep things simple. And there is a difference now that I have a new feature of Manage in Place. So if this is selected, when I save this record, I'm now managing it in place. Of course, it's disappeared from my not in CM list. But if I go here and I look at Adrian's medical record, I can see that it's now a record in CM that is being managed in place. So let's go back to not in CM. Now we have a multi-select option. So I could actually check in various documents at a time if I wanted to. And it's going to tell me, um, if possible, to suppress data entry for the second item, meaning I don't have to keep repeating properties. Um, but I'm just going to check one in to show you this feature. Aldous Huxley's medical file. And this time, I'm not going to manage this in place. I'm going to just manually check it in like a normal check-in in Content Manager that's going to make a copy in CM. And of course, I can see the properties. And if I remove that toggle, I can see Aldous Huxley. So this time, it's not managed in place like Adrian. It's checked out. I'm going to edit this file and see what happens. So let's open it in our browser. And let's make some changes. So how about starting with putting in his proper name? And we just want to make sure that that change is saved. We can see that up here. Perfect. And so now we're able to close that tab, go back to Teams. So now that we've made that change, we can see there is a change to the Aldous Huxley report, which is this little sync icon. So what this is telling us is that the file, the copy in CM, because remember this one is not managed in place as opposed to this one, which is and which syncs automatically, but it's saying that this one is out of date and requires syncing. So what I need to do here is check this in again. New revisions have been created for the out of date documents. So a new revision will now have been created with that change that I've done, and I'm able to see both revisions in CM. Let's look at some other changes. 
first of all, we can work with different data sets. This was a very popular requested feature by customers. So here we were checking everything into the same data set. If I wanted to change data set, I can now see, obviously, I have a lot less checked into that one. So these documents, they're not records in this new 01 data set, although this one is. But of course, I can select. So for example, I could select Aldous Huxley's medical file again, which is not a record in this data set, and I could decide to check it in. This time I'm getting an error. One or more of the selected records already exist. Do you still wish to create? So it is warning me that I'm creating duplicates in a sense. But if I still wish to add the information, I can choose to do so. So here I'm going to add it as a document, etc. Save it. So I'm saving it in a different data set. And I can see that here it's now checked in as a record in that different data set. So let's go back to our original one that we're working on. OK, so now I just want to show two final changes. So the first is you know that this is a two-way interface. Not only can I see content that is you know, only in CM or not in CM, but I can also go and find information that's in Content Manager and add it to this Teams with this new feature of exposed records. For example, I could take this video file and add it into the Teams. It's not going to let me select something if it's already checked out, such as this one here, for example. This record's already checked out, um, but it is going to let me. And of course, I've got all the search here to find what I'm looking for, and I can add this as well. This will expose the selected record in this location. Now we can find that that video file has been imported. So it's a two-way interface that allows Teams users to also access CM content very easily and also to add CM content into their Teams for collaboration. Right, finally, I'm just going to end with one last feature. On a record within Teams, if you click on the record ID, so properties, this you're familiar with, but in the menu, we now have many more features. So for example, in the details, I'm able to add some notes. I'm able to attach and remove contacts, locations. I'm able to trigger a workflow or an action, send to, remove from, etc. So there's a whole list of extra actions here which are now available directly from Teams. So we're just making it easier and easier for the end user to never have to leave the interface, including the ability to edit properties from Teams as well. We hope you enjoyed all the new features that the Teams integration with Content Manager 23.3 has to offer.